Great. Any other announcements? Good morning. No? All right. We are a people who got to celebrate the mission and ministry of NDC in our time of announcements. Well, we only had one. Are there any birthdays? Birthdays? Three. Three. Oh, Rick, I can't see you up there. Me, tomorrow. You had a birthday. No, my tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Oh, I see. So that's why you're here today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Good for you. Yes, Crystal. I'm going back to school. Your dad's birthday last Monday. Oh, did he enjoy that? Great. Great. Anybody else with the birthday? No? Any anniversary? Oh. Dennis has a birthday on Wednesday. Dennis has another birthday on Wednesday. Way to go, Dennis. Anna. Your grandson turns 18 on the 8th. Did I get that right? Okay, good. Oh, we do have some birthdays. Any anniversaries? No anniversaries? I think we'll sing happy birthday twice. Thank 
Creator, guide me through my day. We we kapha. My ethnicus. Keep my family. Keep shahapsa. Watch over my health. Kasukaha. Kasukaha. Protect my surroundings. Jesus, stand among us. Let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. Breathe the Holy Spirit into every heart. Rise to sing the hymn, which in the 1950s perhaps would have been the most commonly sung opening hymn for Sunday morning worship from one side of Canada to the other. Holy, holy, holy. You see some nodding of heads out there. It's Voices United 315. We're singing verses 1 and 2. Your song to sing, 
than your love to share. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The United Church of Christ is on your bulletin cover today. It's also on the overhead. Andrea assured me that every time that we pause to talk about the crest, you will see the image up here. So it's the spiritual and historical reminder of who we are as the United Church of Canada across the world. So today we're going to explore this crest. As I said, as a way to remember our roots. It's the official signature of the United Church of Canada. So it's our legal seal in the time when the seals were used regularly. And so it's placed on documents is that this, you know, designates a document as a, a legal document of the United Church of Canada. But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't created until a little bit later. It was actually not created until and authorized until 1944. So the United Church uh, moved along quite readily for a period of time without this crest and seal. But there was a person, um, a Dr. Mooney was his name, who was involved with the General Council. He brought it to people's attention that perhaps it's time again to think about a crest. And it's not that it hadn't been thought about, but you can kind of think back to 1925 and and to uh, 1944, think of what's happening in the world and across Canada in that particular period of time. Lots was going on, and so many things kept drawing the church's attention, rightly so. And so after some discussion about whether this was the time to uh, give some shape to an official symbol and crest, because this is what happens when you bring something up, right? name something that might happen, might need to happen, then somebody else says, oh, you'd be a great person to lead that initiative. Has that ever happened in your life? Has in mine, and that's okay. But because Dr. Mooney was a doodler, as well as a leader, they thought that he might be the person to design the, the crust, and indeed he did. He took that work on with great pride. This, of course, the one you see is not not the original crest because it's been changed in attitude for many years, for over many years. And what, what, one of the things that it tells us and reminds us is that in the United Church of Canada, there's room for all. There's room for all. And we evolve and we're inclusive and we're committed to this the words of this song which we're going to sing now, There is Room for All, There is Room for All, which is from More Voices, number 62. <laughs> And he, you know these gifts that you bring up 
because other people have brought them? Well, Steve makes sure that they get to the bread of life every week. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And if he happens to be away, he makes sure that somebody else takes them down there. So we're very thankful for all the ways in which together we support people who have some need. You're going gardening, I hear. Are you? You're going gardening. Why are you going gardening? Because it needs fixing. Because it needs fixing. They're going to help fix it. Ladybugs, butterflies, and and red.
it has these beautiful colors and in the center is the is what looks to be an X, which is a Greek letter chi. I should have Jim up here for this part. He's our, our Greek speaker, however I won't call him up. And it's the Greek word for, <laughs> for Christ is Christos. He can tell me afterwards how close I get to the accurate pronunciation of Greek. That's really as far as I'm going to go. And so, of course, Christos, the Greek uh, word, is where we get this, this sense of the English word Christ from. And so that Christ is in the center of the, of the crest. And that symbolism that integrated into all who we are and be and long and yearn to be as the United Church and people of faith, that Christ is the center. We'll talk a little bit more later about the symbols around there. However, in August of 2012, at the 41st General Council, the United Church of Canada acknowledged the presence and spirituality of Aboriginal peoples in the United Church of Canada by revisioning the church's crest. And you can see that revisioning um, and evidence of that in the colors on the crest. So the colors of the medicine wheel have been added and really um, to teach us many uh, truths and they resonate with our Christian teachings and so but the traditional colors yellow, black, red and white are often used in the medicine wheel by Aboriginal peoples both in, in um, on this North American continent and Turtle Island and other places as well those colors emerge and um, are pretty consistent. And they talk about the, kind of the four stages of life and the four stages of, and the four seasons can be represented with those. And that sense of teaching us about uh, how we seek balance in the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of the circle of life. Not unlike Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your mind all your soul, with all your spirit, and all your strength, or all your body. There's that, that whole sense of, of balance. And of course, the Mohawk words were added as well, which mean all my relations, all my relations. And that sense of, uh, of, of connection, both to, in the, in the church we call this the communion of saints, when we talk about both uh, saints living and those who have passed away, and that sense of connection between the physical and the spiritual spiritual world and that um, and on all of our relations talk about all the wonderful earth creatures and those uh, uh, parts of the garden that the children are tending right now and even uh, all my relations takes us into future generations third fourth fifth sixth and seventh generations so those are some of the reasons um, why that symbolism has become important uh, for the United Church of Canada as we have, have moved and evolved. And so there's uh, three, three symbols that are associated with three of the communions that united to form the United Church of Canada. So here's the test. Who are the three communions? The first three churches that united together to form and become the United Church of Canada. Wow, I should have had a real ask for you. That'd be great, awesome. Yes, Congregationalists, Methodists, and the Presbyterian you know, uh, Church of Canada. So the open Bible on the left side of the represents the Congregationalist Church with its emphasis on God's truth. And they brought to the kind of the coming together this formative vision, that sense of the Bible is one place where we find God's truth. And that there's a, a lot of that. And they also brought a love of spiritual freedom and an awareness of the creative power of the Holy Spirit. And a passion and a clear sense of purpose to um, our witness to the civil 
or civic, sorry, civic justice. So these qualities came with uh, strongly with the Congregationalists who were part of the, what was called the Puritan Reformation um, in Great Britain and came to Canada in the early to mid 1700s and first came to Nova Scotia because that's where New Englanders were, um, were given some land. They were promised free land as if they immigrated and there was lots of turmoil and uh, challenges in the whole Reformation movement that was happening in, in England as well. And so some of the Congregationalists immigrated here, kind of like a, uh, a fresh start, a new beginning, and a place where there was land that they could care for and farm. And so they started in Nova Scotia. Now we're going to listen to scripture lesson from Psalm 119. <coughs> Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. That's why I know and confirm it to keep your righteous judgments. I am in deep distress. Give me life, O God, according to your word. Accept, <coughs> O oh God, the willing tribute of my lips, and teach me your virtues. Continually, yet I never forget your law. The wicked have made a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, the very joy of my heart. I have set my heart to fulfill your statutes forever, even to the end. of Jesus. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan. <laughs> Thank you. 